Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos. This block is called Pointed Pinwheel. It finishes at 12 inches. Here's the diagram. And here are four blocks set block to block. I have all of the AccuQuilt dies that you can use for all of the patches are listed here. Patch A is a two inch finished square. We cut two and a half inch squares. We'll need four patches of the background. Patch B is a two inch finished half square triangle. We cut two and seven eighth inch squares, cut it in half once on the diagonal for two patches. If you're using patches, you'll need eight patches of each of these fabrics. We, these are going to be used for half square triangles and for the sky part of the flying geese. And I'm going to be doing half square triangles two at a time and I'm also going to be using the flying geese four at a time. So in that case we'll cut our four squares from each fabric at two and seven eighth inches and we won't subcut them. We'll keep them in squares. Patch C is a four inch finished quarter square triangle. We cut five and a quarter inch squares, cut them in half twice on the diagonal for four patches. For the background we'll need eight patches or four patches plus one square. The one square is for the geese part of the flying geese. And patch D is a four inch finished half square triangle. We cut four and seven eighth inch squares, cut them in half once on the diagonal for two patches. And we'll need four patches of the dark fabric. This is for the large half square triangle in these um, sort of corner units. Here are the fabrics I've chosen. These are the A patches and they are in the corners of the block. These are the B patches for the half square triangles. They'll go in the corners. These will go in the corners and the rest will go in the flying geese. So I've cut squares for each one of those. Patch C, these are used for the geese part of the flying geese and for the pinwheels. And then we have patch D and these are used in the pinwheel units. I wanted to show you cutting a part of patch C. This square is going to be used for the flying geese units. We're going to make the flying geese four at a time. And we'll also use these squares from patch B. So that is the flying geese four at a time. And these will be the half square triangles two at a time. The other patch C, both of these we need to cut patches because they're going to go here and here and make the, the pinwheel part of this block. I'm going to cut these at the same time. So a, few, a little while back I was showing a new quilter how to use a rotary cutter and a ruler and you know a lot of these rulers are made that have stuff at the bottom or they're raised somehow at the bottom so when you put them on your fabric and you put a little pressure on them they don't move as easily and that's a good thing when you're trying to cut but after you've cut something and you want to move your ruler out of the way oftentimes the ruler will slide the fabric out of the way so in this case we want to cut one diagonal then we want to not move the fabric and cut the other diagonal. So I'm going to show you how I do that. You take a ruler that just fits, fits the length you need to cut. And what I do, I angle the ruler like this. It's like If you see it sideways, I, I'm angling it like this, like a lever. So this hand is holding it down and this hand is lifting it up so, and sort of controlling where it's going to go. And I'm doing it with one finger. Sorry about that light. Let me move this over. And I'm doing it with one finger, like this. Okay? So I aim for this corner over here and I place it down and I move it closer to the surface as I'm trying to look at the other corner. And when I'm happy with where it is, I drop it down 
and then check it to make sure it's the right it's laid out the right way then I cut it now before you move this move your hand over here again and just hold the ruler in place very lightly and on the other side here on the other side here I'm going to lift it up so here we're just lifting it up and down and it comes straight up off the fabric now I can move the ruler out of the way and then position it to cut the other diagonal so again I've got my lever here and I, I'm looking at this corner first and get this in about the right area and then I move the ruler this way so it's in the right area over here so now I have my diagonal lined up and I'm going to cut it and then just out of habit I always put my finger down and lift it up like this just to get it out of the way and then you see you have your four pieces are cut and in this case we have eight pieces cut because we cut two layers at a time so that's just a little trick that I wanted to show you about cutting when you don't want the fabric to move between cuts so now let's start looking at the piecing step one we'll take the B patches or the squares and make our eight half square triangles like this if you're not familiar with the half square triangles two at a time stay tuned for a short tutorial that shows you how on the back side of the light fabric we're going to draw a diagonal line put the fabrics together right sides together and we're going to stitch on either side of the diagonal line here is the diagonal line drawn and then the stitching on both sides now we cut this in half along the diagonal line then we have our two half square triangles press the seams open and cut off the nubs for step two we make the four flying geese and we use the method of flying geese four at a time or if you have cut patches you'll just sew the B patches onto either side of the C patch if you're not familiar with flying geese four at a time stay tuned for a short tutorial that shows you how for flying geese four at a time you need one large square and four small squares the large square is the geese part of the flying geese and the small squares are the sky part of the flying geese on the back of each of the small squares draw a diagonal line place two of the small squares like this on the large square right sides together you line up these edges and make sure these lines line up then you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch on both sides of that drawn line here are the two stitching lines on either side of the marked line and now we cut it in half on the marked line now you'll open these up and press your seams open on both sides cut off the nubs now you'll place another square in this corner here's your diagonal line and stitch on either side of the diagonal line and do that for both of these when you're stitching your stitches should come out or start right at this point this intersection here this 90 degree angle cut this in half on the diagonal line and you have these two press your seams open and cut off your nubs and do the same for this one for flying geese for step three we take a flying geese unit and two half square triangle units and piece them like this sew them together press the seams open and make four of these for step four we're going to start with the pinwheel unit we take our C patches and piece them just like the diagram like this you match this edge let me see turn this around that was the back of it you match this edge flip it over and then match all three sides stitch a quarter of an inch and press your seams open 
we'll take the units we just sewed and then the D patch and sew it together like this. Flip it over, match all the sides, stitch a quarter of an inch and press your seams open. We have all of the units are done and now we just put the block together. We just sew the rows together. In this case, you'll have to sew these four pinwheel units together first in order to sew these next to them. So start by sewing these four together. Sew these two together, these two, press the seams, and then sew the two rows together. Then you'll have your three rows you can sew together. The top, this big middle, and then the bottom. And your block will be finished. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos.